Next is The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. I haven't played this one in 17 years. My grandmother had it, but she didn't like it much, so she traded it in for a copy of Dragon Ball Final Bout that my brother and I wanted. Now that was a definite downgrade. The Lord of the Rings films are my absolute favourites, with Return of the King being my all-time favourite film, so I'm kind of ashamed to say the only book I've read all the way through is Fellowship of the Ring. Now we don't actually get the title screen when you first start the game, you get a bit of the Fellowship of the Ring opening that I won't show you for copyright reasons. I'm just going to assume you've seen the films and know what's going on. We get this moment where film footage fades into an in-engine cutscene as I take control of Isildur during the battle in Mordor in the War of the Last Alliance. This stage acts as a tutorial, telling me how to defend and fight. Speed attacks are the quicker attacks for defenseless enemies and feast attacks are used for destroying shields. I have a meter in the corner that fills up as I damage enemies in quick succession without taking damage myself. The higher the bar, the higher my rank for killing that enemy. It goes from fair, to good, to excellent, and then when it fills, I enter perfect mode, where all enemies killed get the perfect ranking and I also deal more damage. After the first two waves of orcs, Mount Doom starts erupting, raining down fireballs I have to avoid while fighting. I discover one of Isildur's special moves, Isildur's Swift Terror. These combos are not only strong, but they add a large chunk to the perfect gauge. At this point I should also state that this game uses the score from the films, but I'm not risking that, so like with Rocket, I'm going to be putting in whatever video game music fits. Not long later, Sauron shows up and starts smashing people up in time for Isildur to chop his ring finger off and defeat him. It then fades from Isildur refusing to destroy the ring to Aragorn telling his horse to set off the Helm's Deep. I get a mission rating of good for that level. As Aragorn arrives at Helm's Deep and explains the uruk army emerging there, we flash back to Aragorn's fight with the Nazgul at Weathertop. While there was a Fellowship of the Ring game the year earlier, that game was book licensed, not film, which is why we have a few levels based on the first film. I have to keep Frodo alive while fighting them too. The only way to damage them is to light a torch from the fire in the middle and then hit them to set them alight. After defeating two, Frodo puts the ring on to try and hide, alerting them to his location. I then enter perfect mode from defeating the third just in time for the cutscene where Frodo is stabbed. I eventually need to take out the last two before Frodo dies. We then skip ahead to the Council of Elrond where Frodo decides to take the ring to Mordor to destroy it and the Fellowship of the Ring is formed. Gimli's face is fucked up and Sam, Merry and Pippin don't get to appear. I get a mission rating of excellent and Aragorn reaches level 2 and gets 5,000 experience for buying upgrades. I use them all to buy Isildur's War Rush, a combo that knocks an enemy to the ground and then finishes them. For finishing these first two levels, I unlocked five extras. First being an interview with Peter Jackson and Barry Osborn. They say his interview, there's very little talk of the game itself from Jackson, most of it is random clips from the special features on the extended DVDs. It does have footage of the actors doing their voiceovers and Osborn trying out the game. Next is an interview with Elijah Wood, which is kind of funny because he barely even has any lines in the game because Frodo's barely in the game. It is interesting that back in 2002 he's calling himself a game fan. Obviously the term gamer had been around for ages by then, but I guess back when I was 10 the term hadn't become so ubiquitous yet. I certainly wasn't seeing people use it to describe their entire identity yet back then. At one point he calls the game beautiful to look at while playing. I mean, it didn't look bad back in 2002, but even back then I wouldn't have gone that far. He is clearly thrilled to have his likeness in the game though. Funny how the one with the smallest role in the game enjoys it most. There's also an interview with Ian McKellen. Like Frodo, Gandalf isn't in the game much. This was the first video game he had ever played according to this interview. There's even footage of that. He's trying, bless him. Considering his status as an actor and this being made in 2002, he could very easily have just looked down on the medium and not really bother and everyone would be like, yeah, fair enough. I like the understatedness of which he describes the big fights in this game as just an aggressive bit of fighting. The fourth extra is a behind the scenes making of with the developers themselves. There's something thing about the evil one ring morphing into the EA logo in these. I don't think that was an intentional bit of self-awareness. That's not a shot at the devs themselves by the way. I imagine having a year to get a full game out of a film that's still in production isn't the chillest time. It's why I tend to go easier on these kinds of licensed games. None of the many studios doing film tie-ins were setting out to make anything average back then. They just weren't given the time and budget to make something great. It's the movie release tie-ins that did come out great that the freaks that by all logic shouldn't have turned out that good. Now I think about it, behind the scenes videos were quite common in movie licensed games in that generation. There was one back in Hulk too. They've died off since it seems. One story they come out with that I just love is that Viggo Mortensen and his stunt double just rolled up to the studio of the creator swords and acted out a fight in front of them to give them a look at how Aragorn would fight in the game. After all the stories about him from filming I was just thinking, yeah that sounds like Viggo. Although, one of the devs mispronounces Balin as Balin, so every bit of praise I give this game is now tainted. The final extra I unlocked is a gallery of John Howe and Alan Lee's concept art for the films. I only really know them from the extended edition DVD extras on pre-production and Peter Jackson's quest to track them down and get them involved. Now it's time for the third level, Gates of Moria. I'll be playing through as all three characters, but I'll focus on just one for the video. I'll go with my Legolas playthroughs of this one. 
Two thirds of the Fellowship are nearing Moria until Gandalf stops them, freezing Boromir in time completely. Sam, Merry and Pippin don't get in-game models. He sends Legolas and Gimli ahead to make the path safe. Going further a little has some orcs sliding down from higher up. If Aragorn is a balanced character, then Legolas is a faster but weaker character. After going further we get a little scene where Gimli is almost attacked from behind, but you save him with your bow. Every character has a ranged weapon and as you'd expect, Legolas has his bow. Aragorn also has a bow for his. After taking out the next group and crossing a bridge, I get rushed by orcs on the ground while a few hang back in the distance firing flaming arrows at me. Of the three characters, Legolas is my favourite to play as. He's best at ranged attacks, but you'll be firing up close far more often, and him being weaker actually makes it easier for me to build up to perfect mode. In the films themselves, I think he's the least interesting of the Fellowship, but that's fine. When you have so many main characters that need fleshing out and limited runtime, some are going to get the short end, and I feel Legolas is the one that can get away with simply having cool factor over character. At the top of the next path, we're treading water through this swampy section. Orcs will rise from the water to try and surprise me, but this is my second run through the level after Aragorn's, so it doesn't work. This goes on longer than it needs to since you walk slowly in the water. At the end, we get attacked by the Watcher in the water. He knocks Gimli out, so I have to fight it alone. I first have to parry a tentacle to stun it so that I can cut it off. Cutting off a tentacle will have it rise from the water so I can shoot it in the face. This is a very easy boss and I very quickly get all five shots in to defeat it. Everyone else catches up so they can gather around the door of Durin and Gandalf can open it. Legolas reaches level 2 and gets a good rating. With his experience, I buy Elrond's War Rush, a charged fierce attack called Elven Fury, and the Rivendell Longbow so his arrows deal more damage. As for the other two, Aragorn also gets a good rating. I use the experience to buy Rising Attack for when I get knocked down. Gimli reaches level 2 and also gets a good rating. I use his experience to buy Balin's War Rush, Dwarven Fury, and Balin's Swift Terror. All attacks of the same type have similar names between characters, so I at least don't have to explain the same attack multiple times. Next level is Balin's Tomb. Seems fitting that I use Gimli's run for this one. After finding Balin's coffin, orcs break down the door and attack. Just got to stay in this one room killing everything and not dying. As you would expect, Gimli is the slower but stronger character. He's fun to play as normally, but his strength is going to become a problem for me later on. I liked Gimli in the films. I know a lot of people didn't like the comic relief aspects to him, but I never had a problem with them. Using Balin's Swift Terror in this level is a good way to fill up that perfect gauge and I enter perfect mode a few times. After a few minutes, the Cave Troll bursts in. Taking damage from one of his attacks deals loads of damage, but I'm already in perfect mode when he appears, so my attacks on him also do more damage. After enough damage, I retreat up to the higher levels. While the Troll whips at me, I have to hide behind the pillars until they break using my projectile attack. Gimli's is throwing smaller axes and they're wank. He only carries 25 as opposed to Legolas's 60 arrows, and the auto aiming on them is worse in my experience. With constantly needing to refill on axes, this takes forever. But I finally kill him, which ends the level. Gimli reaches level 3 and gives me my first perfect rating. With his experience, I buy Rush Attack and Might of Rock, which is a permanent health increase. Aragorn also reached level 3 but only got a good rating. For him I buy Range of Fury and his health increase, Strength of the Stewards. Legolas hits level 3 and also got good. For him I buy his health increase, Force of Celeborn, and his Rush Attack. The reward for finishing Balin's Tomb is a gallery of Fellowship of the Ring production photos. The fifth level has us finishing off Fellowship with Amon Hen. I'm back to focusing on Aragorn for this one. After the film clips, we start with Aragorn sending off Frodo as they get surrounded by Urukai. I have a counter for them starting at 75, and it's not long before I've reached perfect mode and that number is reduced to 59. Although that's mostly because the AI Legolas and Gimli can kill enemies too. This isn't actually a problem for my ranking. To get a perfect rating, I just need a certain percentage of my overall kills to be perfect. The actual amount doesn't matter, just percentage. Aragorn wasn't my favourite, but I enjoyed using him more than Gimli. I loved his portrayal in the film itself. It gets better when you hear of Viggo Mortensen behind the scenes. I'll spare the details because everyone brings him up when talking about him, but he just comes across as one of the coolest people ever. There isn't that much to say about the first chunk of this level, I just keep heading further into the forest taking out everything in my sight. At one point they try trapping me between two fires, but once I shoot them all dead I can keep going. Once I'm down to the last 25 Oryx, I reach some ruins where I take out most of them before reaching a bridge where I finish off the last. Frodo manages to escape and I cross the bridge as Lurtz is killing Boromir. Here, he's already dead by the time Aragorn shows up. Lurtz will stand in the back firing arrows until I kill his backup. If I get close, he can just shrug off my attacks and knock me down. After he takes a few arrows, he trades his bow for a sword and starts charging at me. To damage him, I have to lure him to one of these statues so he gets his sword stuck. Thing is, I try keeping my distance and just fire arrows while he's stuck, wasting time. I end up dying here because I didn't figure out this simple strategy. Thankfully, I'm checkpointed at Lurtz. Next time, I just keep getting him stuck and whacking him till he's dead. Everyone gathers around the already dead Boromir, and Aragorn kisses his forehead before fading back into film footage. I get Aragorn to level 4, and a good rating. 
Every two levels you gain access to a new set of skills to buy. I buy Aragorn's version of Isildur's Swift Terror, Rush Attack, another new combo, Isildur's Death Charge, and Goblin Bane, an instant kill counter for goblins. Legolas also reaches level 4 and gets a good rating. I buy Elrond's Swift Terror, Goblin Bane, and Lothlorien Longbow. Gimli on the other hand reaches level 5 and gets a perfect rating. I buy another health increase, Might of Iron, along with Goblin Bane and Balin's Death Charge. For getting Gimli to level 5, I unlock an interview with John Rhys Davies. His first words are, I really enjoyed making the game, as if he coded the entire thing himself. He also has that deer in the headlights look while he's playing. If you've watched the DVD extras, you can guess he's happiest about not having to wear the makeup. He also calls me, the player, a gamester. Don't do that, it doesn't sound right. I don't even call myself a gamer anymore to avoid association with cunts. Finally into Two Towers territory, starting with Fangorn Forest. Back to Legolas for this one. We're looking for Merry and Pippin because no one told us that they don't exist in the game yet. A little bit in, a group of orcs burst out of a tree, giving me the chance to build up to perfect mode using the swift terror move a lot. I travel down the tree only for an orc to drop down through the top. These ones are pains that guard and parry nearly every attack. I don't have the counter skill for orcs yet though, so I get killed because I haven't figured out the guy's pattern yet, even though I'd already killed him in the Aragorn run. Next time I just fill him with arrows and knock him down once. After I leave the tree, two of the orcs fly by. Just around the corner is the troll that killed them. By this point I figured out how to deal with trolls. Thieves attack, run in a circle to avoid their response, repeat until dead. Past it is a group of orcs hanging around a hole. Two swift terrors gets me the perfect mode to take most of them out quickly, and I even get a second to finish off the rest. Past that is the river with three archers where I get yet another perfect mode for the last one. I run up river where my movement's slow to a crawl, but I still perfect mode my way through a good chunk of them. At the end of the river, I run through a waterfall into a cave. Yet another troll bursts through the wall and the same strategy I used on the last one works. As I reach the exit, an orc hiding in the dark screen shows up and whacks me. That happened on all three playthroughs of this level. Then Swift Terror gets me the perfect mode for the following orcs. Why do other moves even exist? What's the point of them when Swift Terror gets me everything I want? I have two more trolls to get past using the same strategy before I go through the level exit and get put into the footage of Gandalf the White's reveal. Legolas reaches level 5 and with 60% of his kills being perfect, that's the rating he gets. I buy Elrond's Death Charge and Charge Attack. Aragorn also reached level 5 and also got a perfect. He gets Charge Attack and Isildur's Death Charge. On the other hand, Gimli only got a good. It's harder to reach perfect mode with him since he kills most enemies so quickly that the specials don't get to connect. I buy him Rising Attack. Clearing Fangorn Forest gets me production photos of scenes set in Fangorn and Orphank. Clearing Fangorn and getting Legolas to level 5 unlocks an interview with Orlando Bloom. Interestingly, both him and Elijah Wood start off with the differences between doing ADR and a straight voiceover. Other than that, he has similar comments to the previous interviews I've unlocked. Next is level 7, Plains of Rohan. Back to Gimli for this one. He's a level made up for the game. Before reaching Adoras, Gandalf has to stop by one of the many Rohan villages that got torched to help out. I have a meter on the upper right representing the population of this village that I have to keep from emptying by stopping all the Urukai from killing them. You can really see me struggling to reach that perfect mode. The kicker is that I reach it as I kill the last enemy in this area. For some reason, only Gandalf's sword has the power to break this one door so I can progress while he teleports away. In this burning house, I need to break open a barrel containing water to part the fire and free those trapped. Once they escape, an Uruk on the top floor kindly uses the victim's body to put out the fire blocking the stairs so I can get up there and kill them all. I can then leap through the back door to take on the next lot of them. I run across a roof and throw an axe to break a water barrel I can't reach and free the villagers trapped ahead. Past that, I enter a house with a burning hole in its roof and fight my way down to the front door. Gandalf meets back up with me just as he's getting knocked on his ass. After clearing out this area, I can go uphill to the last section. The Uruks force a group of villagers into a house and trap them inside as it burns. These villagers have a separate life bar than the others, but once I free them, they're at risk of being killed while fleeing, which will detract from the first bar. So I have to kill as many Uruks as I can first. It doesn't help, because just as I'm about to kill what I think is the last one and after freeing them, I still fail the level. No checkpoints here, I'm sent back to the beginning. Then the same thing happens next time. I manage it on my third try. Gandalf tells me that the survivors will head to Helm's Deep, but there's still work to do. I get a good rating and buy Gimli, Balian's Gambit. Aragorn reached level 6 and got an excellent rating. I buy him Orc Bane, which is an instant kill counter for Orcs. I also buy him his next level of charge attack, Wilderness Rage. Legolas also reached level 6, but he got a perfect rating. I buy him Orc Bane and Elrond's Gambit. The reward for clearing Plains of Rohan is production photos of Rohan and Helm's Deep. For clearing the level and getting Aragorn to level 5, I get an interview with Vigo Mortensen. While everyone else came back for the Return of the King game, including the actors of characters who weren't in this one, this is the only game where Vigo Mortensen did Aragorn's voice. I was actually surprised to come back to this one and see he was actually in it. He strikes me as the kind of guy who wouldn't be interested in doing that. 
Even in the interview, he seems to be struggling to think of things to say about the game itself. Returning to showing Aragorn gameplay for the Westfold, here we meet up with the King's Guard to help them fight through the route to Helm's Deep. Theoden also doesn't appear in this game outside of film clips. A bomber Uruk runs up and takes a load of them out. Aragorn takes out the rest before the next wave can kill the captain. He tells me that we need to take out all the explosives Saruman's forces have been moving through the village. First explosive I run into and set off. Then I blow another set up in my face. I'm thankful for all the healing items dotted around. I just have to keep moving forward, taking out the enemy, crossing the river and heading downhill where I let another suicide bomber blow up on me. Throughout this section there are many bombers running down from the gate as long as I stay in this section. Down the hill are a load of explosives crammed together, but I don't get the chance to blow anyone up with them because they all crowd around me. It does let me get a perfect mode for a bit, so there's that. Through another gate and I end up in a slightly narrow area with explosives along the edges and more bombers running at me from uphill. This is where I get killed right in front of the health refill that would have saved me. Then just to be a dick, one of the bomber orcs blows himself up on my body. I get to that spot in much better shape next time and actually get to use the explosives on the enemy. I just slowly advance up the hill taking out the thousands of bombers coming from around the corner. Up top is another little village I clear out before I get into the lake. Not only have the infinitely spawning bombers back, but I also have my hindered movement and orcs jumping out from the water. But it isn't too bad, I just have to make it to the other end and take out their big line of exploding carts to finish the level as everyone makes for Helm's Deep. Aragorn reaches level 7 and gets a good rating. I buy him the Rohan bow. Legolas also reaches level 7 and gets a good. I gave him his next level of charge attack, Gilgalad's Rage. Gimli reaches level 6 and also gets a good rating. I can't afford anything for him. The ninth level is the Gap of Rohan. We'll see Aragorn do this one because it's so short. This is the last level before Helm's Deep. We arrive at a burning house for a couple of wag riders to burst out and attack us. They do a bit of lunging at us but don't live very long. I break through the burning frame of the house which collapses behind me, cutting my two allies off from me. More riders show up and they take me on two at a time. They charge me, then retreat to fire arrows and repeat that pattern. When I kill the fourth, I get perfect mod just in time for the captain, but don't even get a single hit during it. The only way to damage him is to keep dodging the wag's lunges and wait for it to get up on its back legs before attacking. After that the captain will call in one reinforcement and the pattern repeats. Don't stay too close after damaging him because the wag can grab you and swing you around. Repeat this a few more times to kill him. After this, Aragorn hints at his almost death over the cliff in the film and we're dropped back to where we're introduced to him after the tutorial. He reaches level 8 and gets a good rating. I buy Bane of Saruman which is an instant kill counter for the Urukai. Legolas meanwhile shot up to level 9 and got a perfect rating. I get him Bane of Saruman and rising attack. Gimli also jumps two levels to level 8 but only gets a fair rating. I get him Orc Bane and Bane of Saruman. Helm's Deep is split across the final three levels, starting with the Deeping Wall. Back to Legolas for this one. Urukai are trying to breach Helm's Deep's wall and I have to run around this section kicking ladders over when they appear and killing the ones that do make it to the top. There's a small map in the corner showing where ladders are, represented by red dots. The map also acts as a gauge that fills in to show how many Urukai are on the wall. If it fills up, you're overrun and you've lost. We'll also periodically get volleys of flaming arrows to avoid. I always play through the levels in character select order, so Legolas was the second character I went through with this. This means I was a little used to how the level worked after being overrun a few times as Aragorn. Another downside is that because the level is so dark, I have sometimes wasted precious seconds trying to attack one of my elf allies thinking they were the enemy. My AI allies aren't completely useless though and they can kill enemies to lower the gauge for me, but all of them except for the other two playable characters can also die. I the player and the only one capable of kicking over ladders though. Those constantly parrying Urukai show up towards the end and kill me though, as I just struggle with getting used to the counter timing. Dying on this one towards the end is painful because this is a long level and having to start it all again multiple times can leave you fed up. I die on my next try too. Two deaths leads to a combined 15 minutes lost. Seven or so minutes might not seem like a lot of time, but in this small space repeating the same actions, it's an eternity. On my third try I reach the part where they start catapulting flaming balls at me and get obliterated by the very first one. On my fourth try it looks like I'm about to be overrun, but I just survived long enough to finish the level. The elves clear out the walls, only for that one Olympic runner Uruk to blow up the wall. I hated that level. Long repetitive levels where you can go from absolutely in control to fucking dead in the time it takes to blink are my thing. I got a good rating and buy Legolas Elrond's judgement. Aragorn reaches level 9 and also gets good. I buy Master Swordsman to increase the strength of the speed attack along with Isildur's deliverance. Like the rest, Gimli only got a good, I buy him Balin's judgement. Part 2 of Helm's Deep is Breached Wall. Gimli gets this one. The civilians are hidden away inside and with the wall blown open, I'm the only thing keeping Saruman's army away from them. To start, we have loads of bombers trying to get past me and break open the door to the civilians, so I have to use Gimli's crappy throwing axes. With arm protecting as a health bar I have to keep from emptying. 
Doesn't matter if the door is a hit from death and only hanging on one hinge, the Oryx can't do shit unless it falls off completely. At least for this part, the game is generous with its health and ammo refills. After the waves of bombers, I get shield orcs to deal with. The problem with these waves of non-bombers is that one will get past you without you noticing and slowly plink away at the door's health. Following the shield is the dual wielders. At one point, so many gather around the door that it becomes safe to just blow up a bomber next to them and take them out at once, also damaging the door, than it is to try and deal with them all myself. I end up having to do that multiple times. It looks like it's mostly going well here, but that's only because it's the third playthrough. The Aragorn and Legolas runs of this level were miserable because it's another really long level in an enclosed space with no checkpoints that took multiple attempts each. By the time I got to Gimli's turn, I'd been playing this level for an hour straight. About 7 minutes in, I get the Uruks that love parrying and loads of archers. Bombers are still showing up too. And just a little bit later, trolls start showing up too. So now when I hit a troll, I sit back to throw an axe at a bomber, only for the troll to throw shit in my face. Once the troll is done, they come in with a catapult that's constantly launching at the door. This is the cause of most of my failures on this level. All the enemies that gang up on me and keep knocking me on my ass while I'm trying to smash up the catapult. It gets way too close before I get that final hit in and the catapult is destroyed. We still have to fall back though, but at least this level is done. Gimli reaches level 9 and gets a good rain, I buy him Balin's Deliverance. Aragorn reaches the maximum level, level 10, and also gets a good rain. I buy him Strength for the Isildur to increase his health, along with Isildur's Judgement. Legolas also gets a good and I buy him Dragonfire Arrows, which had a fire effect to his arrows. And back to Aragorn once again for the final level, Hornburg Courtyard. Like the other two Helm's Deep levels, it's a long bastard with no checkpoints. I'm also guarding another door. No bombers this time, thank fuck. All these enemies around also make it easy to get into perfect mode with the Swift Terrors. The last level is a good time to talk about the choice of playable characters. Mainly that it's just Aragorn's party and the actual main character Frodo is unplayable. For this game, I think it's fine. You could certainly say the Two Towers was more Aragorn's film than Frodo's. Of course, Frodo's still the main character, but Aragorn seemed to get more focus in the second film. After a while, Legolas gets cornered in the upper levels and I have to get up there and save him. If you're playing as Legolas, this would be Aragorn. On the way back, I have to avoid fireballs from catapults while more Urukai get past Gimli and start hacking at the gate. So I have to get back down to the gate and kill them. Here's another anecdote for you. I was 9 when I first watched Fellowship and was very bad at paying attention or remembering dialogue. I completely missed the name Aragorn multiple times watching it. I'd seen all the advertisements and so his name was already logged into my head as Strider. When did I finally notice the name Aragorn? Watching Towers in the cinema and being confused as to why everyone was calling him a completely different name, now that Strider was dropped completely by that point. In fact, I had a hard time picking up most of the names watching it. By the end of my first doing a Fellowship, I had only picked up the names Frodo, Sam, Gandalf and Strider. That's over half of the Fellowship I couldn't even name after watching Fellowship. Never mind being 10 and watching Towers, so then I had to try and remember which one's Arwen and which one's Eowyn. But even I knew which one was Sauron and which one was Saruman. During all this I'm needing to alternate between the courtyard and taking out archers on the walls, but in the end I die from a whack to the arse while looking for a health refill. Next time I get killed dealing with the archers. The difficulty spike for these Helm's Deep levels I really wasn't expected. I struggled with them back then, but I was 10, I struggled with most games. Archers get me again. Three deaths in a row on that wall. By the fourth I was starting to get very fed up. It's not until my sixth attempt I get past the archers again. When the life bar for the gate is just about to become empty, some trolls decide to enter the fray too. Seconds later the Oryx have broken through and I failed the level. Next time I make it back there with some health left in the gate. Even better, I get a perfect mode so the damage boost just destroys the trolls, beating the level for me. But as a final fuck you after 45 minutes on this one, the troll still lands on the gate when he dies and breaks it open, dropping me into the climax of the film where Gandalf shows up with the Rohirrim to bail everyone out. Afterwards we get the scene from before Edoras where Gandalf talks to Aragorn about how Sauron fears him. This is interesting because this scene was only in the extended edition, which this game predates by over a year, so a reward for being the game back then was a scene from the film you hadn't seen before. It then ends on a black screen saying the return of the king will be coming in 2003. Whether they're specifically talking the film or saying there will definitely be another game, I don't know. Thanks to the sheer volume of enemies and how easy it is to reach perfect mode, I get the easiest perfect rating from one of the hardest levels. I buy him Strength of the Lendil for a health boost, the Gondor Bow, and another health boost with Strength of the Argonath. After that struggle, I beat it with Legolas first time, reach level 10 with him and get another perfect rating. I buy him Mithril Arrows and Elrond's Deliverance. But then it took another 40 something minutes to get through it with Gimli. He's the last to reach level 10 and he also gets a perfect rating. I buy him Axe Mastery of Kings to make his fierce attack stronger, along with another health boost with Rune of Protection. Not done yet though. 
Beating the Hornberg Courtyard and getting a character up to level 10 unlocks that character's playthrough of the Tower of Orthanc. Here, Saruman, the only character not voiced by his film actor, challenges me to an enemy rush across 20 floors. Things start off simple, just a few Urux. Floor 2 adds shield orcs into the mix. Floor 3 is over in seconds. At the end of every floor you get a small health refill during the transition to the next. The first few floors are pretty unremarkable, just slowly adding more enemies both in numbers and types. I'd say floor 8 is the first tricky one, since you have both shields and archers to deal with. When you get to floor 10 and it's all regular vanilla sword works again and just two archers, it's such a mercy. On this first try I make it up to floor 14 before I'm worn down and finished off. Next time I finally started using the banes. This has me get to the floor 14 with much more health and I can continue on. Floor 15 is when we start getting trolls added in. This one isn't too bad though. On floor 16, those Uruks that parry a lot are complete chumps when you know how to parry back. Downside is parrying will get you an excellent, but it's much harder to get perfect mode. Floor 18 is tricky though. It's hard to focus on parrying when you're also trying to keep your distance from a troll. Then floor 19 sticks two trolls on me at once, so now when I go in to hit one, I'm at risk of the other getting hit in. Floor 20 then goes and makes me find three trolls at once. And these are the variants that can throw things at me, so I'm just running in circles only occasionally getting a hit in until I'm killed. I get them next time though. What follows is a short scene where Saruman mocks your character before disappearing. All those Banes get Aragorn an excellent rating. I buy him his final upgrade, Wrath of Numenor. An hour and a half of trying with Legolas gets me a perfect rating for him. I buy his final upgrades, Force of Galadriel for more health and Elven Bowmastery. With Gimli, I somehow accomplish it on my first try. He gets an excellent. I buy a projectile upgrade, Moria Axes. Completing Tower of Orthanc just once unlocks Isildur as a playable character outside the tutorial and unlocks his own Tower of Orthanc. But first I'm going back and getting perfect ratings with all four characters on every level. First the Prologue, which can only be played with Isildur, and then Weathertop, which can only be played by Aragorn. Next is Gates of Moria. This one is easy. First Aragorn, then I choose Isildur. Isildur starts off at level 10 and with all upgrades. Gameplay wise he's an exact clone of Aragorn. He even takes his place in the levels, delivering all his lines and such. As a kid, I remember being a little disappointed the secret character was Isildur. I got it in my head that Gandalf would be the secret character, since it can be seen fighting controlled by the AI in Balin's tomb. Boromir isn't at level 2, but he didn't cross my mind. I don't think I'd even known Boromir's name at that point. Looking back, I prefer it being Isildur. For one, I hate when a playable character is limited to just one section for no reason with no way to use them outside it especially when there's no gameplay benefit to limiting them. Second, Gandalf got to be playable in the sequel and Isildur didn't come back, so this would have been his only chance. Anyway, I get a perfect with him. And Legolas, and finally Gimli. I buy him another health boost, Might of Balin. Gates of Moria is done, next is Balin's Tomb, another very easy one. Aragorn perfect, Isildur perfect. I somehow let the troll kill me as Legolas, twice, but third time I get that perfect. Already got the perfect with Gimli, so it's on to Amon Hen. Once again, swift terrors do the work for me. Aragorn perfect, Isildur perfect. I die once at Lurse with Legolas because I was desperately trying to bane that Urukai behind him. Next time I get his perfect. Once again, Gimli already had perfect here, so it's on to Fangorn Forest. Aragorn and Legolas already have perfect here, so I also get it with Isildur on my first try. Then with Gimli right after. I get him another health increase, Might of Gloin. Plains of Rohan next. Legolas already has perfect here, so I get it with Aragorn in no time, and then Isildur. However, this is where Gimli starts to be a problem. He keeps killing the enemies too quickly for me to fill the perfect gauge, leading to me getting loads of excellence. So it takes me a few tries to get his perfect. I buy him his final health upgrade, Might of Khazad Doom. Now the West Fold is tough for everyone. With all the explosives nearby to knock you down and waste time, building your score is its hardest on this level. The best thing to remember is that it's not how many perfects you have altogether. It's your overall percentage of perfects. Ignoring enemies you know will set useless kill rankings is a viable strategy. Just don't let yourself get killed by the enemies you're ignoring, especially not so close to the end. But with Aragorn it still only takes two tries. Only two tries if you still do a two. Same with Legolas. Gimli on the other hand was such a pain that I wound up deleting a couple recordings containing nothing but failures because I just didn't have the space for all that useless footage. Altogether it probably took about an hour and a half. I finally buy him his last upgrade, Wrath of Moria. Gap of Rohan next, and this is a tricky one because there are so few enemies here that you need every perfect you can get. I spent ages building up perfect modes and waiting until it matches up with the Wild Captain's vulnerable state because I need that perfect. Just look at the amount of kills when Aragorn does get his perfect. That was the first try. I can even get away with just two perfects compared to three excellences I did with Isildur. 
but since Gimli struggles to build up the score, his was the most difficult perfect in the entire game. Another one that took me at least an hour. Friends on social media must have been very confused when seemingly unprovoked I post out of nowhere, fuck you Gimli, you piece of shit. But I got it in the end, mainly by being lucky and spreading my non-perfect kills across all three other rings. Next is the Deeping Wall, and here I get very little kills and just folks knocking over ladders while my AI soldiers do most killing. This means that in this 8-9 to nine minute level, I kill only 7 enemies, and with 5 of those 7 being perfects, it's an easy perfect rating. Isildur didn't get so many, and I wasn't expecting just 2 perfects out of 9 kills to get there, but it did, and I'll take it. Legolas went basically the same as Aragorn. Gimli took 2 tries because of course he did, but I still got the perfect. Now for Breached Wall. By this point I'm also using a lot of death charge combos because of their effectiveness on shield enemies. You'd best have the perfect mode when there's loads of bombers, because those guys are the ones building up your amount of fair ratings otherwise since they die in one hit. Using that strategy gets Aragorn the perfect on my first replay. Isildur gets a smaller percentage of perfects, but it's still enough for the rating. Legolas took 3 attempts to even beat the level again, but he gets more perfects than anyone else. Even Gimli got the perfect first time. He got far less than everyone else though, and even I was surprised he got it. The default 3 all got perfect on the Homeburg Courtyard first time, so I just need to do it with Isildur. And I get it first try. Turns out Death Charge is just better than Swift Terror for these. All that's left is the Tower of Orphanks. Once again, I just barely get the perfect with Gimli. But then I put him to shame with my Aragorn perfect, which just leaves Isildur's Tower of Orphank for last. I'm sure it's anticlimactic to learn that my strategy to get all the perfects was stop spamming one move, spam a different one instead, but that's how it went. Isildur gets me the final perfect and I've 100% of the game. Being his Tower of Orthanc plays the credits and gives me a menu filled with cheat codes that I don't need. The Lord of the Rings of Two Towers is another one of those OK early 2000s licensed games like I've done before. Combat's kind of repetitive but most of the levels are short enough it doesn't get old. The last three levels can get old very quick though and that's about a quarter of the entire game. If we're comparing these licensed games from that time, it was more consistently fun than Hulk but not as interesting as Orphan Sky and of Sorcery, so that's where it'll be ranked. It was nice to come back to this one after nearly two decades, but had I never come back to this game again, I wouldn't have regretted it, or even thought about it. 